here. So, real quick story. Um, you know, I've had a lot of experiences. One of the biggest ahas I had after building a successful real estate business, my best year, third year in business, I personally listed 368 homes myself. Um, that's thanks to Jay, Key, uh, Jay, Jay Kinder being a mentor. Um, Jay says you don't want to be the smartest kid in class, you just want to sit next to him. So for me, I think everything that I'm going to share with you is just because there's a lot of smart other people that I sat next to and took notes and combined it together to kind of share with you um, what I'm going to share today. My, my topic's about onboarding. It's uh, when before you start. Um, but I'm kind of obsessed with process improvement. I, I got that way. I, used, I had three lawn services when I was a kid. My third lawn service, I sold. Um, I had a kind of a, a game-changing moment for me. I went to my banker, who was my ex-girlfriend's dad, my wife's uncle, live in Oklahoma. <laughs> and uh, his name's Chuck Henson. He owned Liberty National Bank. And I drove up from Dallas and I said, hey man, Chuck, I want to buy, uh, I, was, I was going probably 30 yards uh, a day. And I wanted, to, I wanted to grow my business about 60 yards a day. I was 20 years old. And um, I, I went to Chuck and he said, man, we're having an audit on the bank right now, Mike. And, with these other things that are going on, I don't, I don't feel comfortable giving you the loan. I literally took a guy with me to go get this pickup truck in for sale at home. And it was a done deal, so I drove home kind of with my tail between my legs. I didn't know what, why Chuck didn't give me the money. I knew Chuck since I was a kid. I was a paper boy. Um, I just felt like he let me down, and I went home. And I got on the internet. I think it was the first thing I ever Googled. And I Googled how to grow lawn service. And when I Googled it, this magazine came up called Lawn and Landscape. I subscribed to it. It was a free magazine. They sent it to my house. It came about 10 days later. And on the cover, there was this guy. Um, he, was in a, he was in a UPS outfit, and he had these shorts on. And he was standing in front of over. And he said, what, what you can learn about growing your lawn service from UPS? And I flipped over, and there was this uh, article, and it talked about how UPS delivered their packages, and they made sure that their, their drivers stopped at as few stoplights and all their packages were on. There was as many, as few, right, um, as few. They routed it so they, when they got to that stoplight, they had as many right-hand turns so they didn't have to wait at the light. And so they had this they had this software called Lawn Monkey. I bought the software for $54. And I put all my jobs in there. And the crazy thing, I was going to Highland Village. I was going all over these other places. And I really started looking at my business different. I realized that you could actually you know, if you if you constantly think about your business and how to improve it, there is actually a better way. And so, what ended up happening is I doubled the size of my lawn service without buying another truck, without having more workers comp, without having more people, more stuff. I did it because I used my thinking. And so, for me, what I'm going to share with you is, is definitely a working process. I will tell you that I'm constantly thinking about how can I onboard somebody. And the reason I say that is because I believe everything comes with mindset. And I hear things, and, and you know, intermittently I don't comment, but to me, I, I take negative experiences as great opportunities to learn. I took that from Elon Musk. He's a, his number one mental model is to treat uh, negative feedback by gold because it's an opportunity to improve. So if you come to my house, every complaint, everything that I've ever had with anybody, I literally write it down, I categorize it, I kind of learned that from Dan Kennedy. You know, learning how to write copy, that kind of gave me a, uh, from a marketer standpoint, I started archiving things to come back for future use and building technology and understanding how to have a backlog. I'm telling you guys this because within this group of people, um, we probably have a lot of opportunities if we're able to collaborate on making our processes even that much better because when you think you have it kind of good, it's, it, can, it can get better. So that's what I'm going to share with you guys today. It's not the best, it's just what I'm doing right now. I hope it's better next time you see it, all right? So, the problem, we have, um, we have people who are um, actively, we have people who are active who are not fully onboarded. Like, I had this girl, I brought her on. I brought her on, so this is my responsibility. 100 zero, what I could have done this her. And her name is Courtney Hess, and I said, hey Courtney, um, how's KB Core doing? And she says, what's KB Core? And I was like, how the hell does that happen? Right? So I write that down and I put it down. I was like, how does Courtney, these are called customer stories and sprints and scrums and how people build software and listen to customer databases. So I, I write it down and, and guys, you have to have a process. You know, uh, it's a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a, a particular result. And in the book, Good Strategy, Bad Strategy, you're only, as, you're only as strong as your weakest link, right? And so you have to be able to, um, Identify all these things, but you can't be overwhelmed. You can't do them all at the same time. 
You know, it's, it, when you build software, you have to understand what, what functions and features are going to have the biggest effort impact on providing back value to everybody. You have to be able to prioritize. You have to give yourself permission to have a backlog of things, but to actually be making progress every day. So that's what I work on. I'm always trying to figure out what is the weakest link in the process. And, you know, if you don't have a process right now, I, I would recommend that you find a process or you go into your upline and go all the way up. I'm sure you're not far away from somebody that does. But if you don't have a process, here's the thing. We talk about PGPs, private group uh, presentations, but I recruit people. I recruit people who are recruiting people their first week and they're not even fully on board, right? They're excited about the opportunity, so where do they go? So I, when I bring people on, I have one who I, I take them, I take on the responsibility that anybody who's in my group or anywhere, but for the, for the simple fact that they're in my group, they can bring them to me. It doesn't matter what level they're at, right? Um, I can help them. Um, your new agents don't know what they don't know. So it's the whole philosophy of unconsciously incompetent. You don't know what you don't know, right? I'm a rookie football coach for the for the Frisco Football League. It's probably one of the most competitive football for seven-year-old rookie tackling. Biggest mistake, I it's been hard. Um, they don't have their processes dialed in. I swear to you. Coach Tony Ortiz sent me a text that Mike Canola practice three days a week till school starts. He meant till season starts. Screwed up my whole schedule. Screwed up everything for the kids because he sent it to me in a text message and they didn't have a system for it. And that's happened so many times. And, and then I go, and, and Frisco is one of the only, Texas is one of the two states that you can be certified to put, coach football. And I know the systems are out there because I went to the, I went to the USA Football um, Association, whatever their, their deal is. It was beyond impressive. And I saw what the potential was and I saw, but I'm always looking at the process and when you're in a system and you're new, you got to be thinking from their level of consciousness where they are. So you have to make your process visible, and I think that's one thing that EXP has done. I'll give them a round of applause. This is one of the biggest things that I've seen happen in the onboarding because it is a process that's making this. I said, let's give them a round of applause. So when I bring somebody on, I, I'm clearly articulating the value proposition. Here's the thing. I was on a phone call the day before yesterday. And, um, and and the guy told him that Daniel Beer sold 800 million in production. I don't know if he sell that much Daniel. I don't think so. I know it's a lot, but you know you don't know what people are telling people. It's just you know I, I don't know why he said that. Maybe he just made it up. I don't know. But you know you want to be able to tell people the real information. You don't want. I mean I believe onboarding starts when how they came on board. You know what they think they signed up for. So a lot of the times that's what we call the value proposition. Why they chose to get to in the first place. And sometimes those are for reasons that maybe they see value in something that you're going to do, that you're going to provide. But make sure that you're articulating that value and you're delivering on that value because the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to, they're going to want to experience the value. So you want to make sure um, you have a process for that. If you don't, you know, you're the processor. I like what Jim Collins said, also good by uh, good to great, how might it fall, great by choice. He says you want to be a clock builder, not a time builder. <clears throat> Right? So I'm always figuring out what is the system, what is the process, how can we process it? If, if, if anyone read The Ultimate Self of by Chet Holmes, I think it's in the first chapter, it said, what happens if you hire 50 people tomorrow? The reason they say that is because they're making you try to think about that scale, right? And your business is going to grow at scale. I believe communication is the biggest, weakest link. So in good strategy, bad strategy, the reason why is because why did Courtney Hess not know about KD Core? You know, I don't know her email. Does she check her EXP email? What email does she have? How many emails did she get? You know, did they go to spam? I had a call this morning. I won't say what it was about, but it was a girl who has, she's trying to order her signs. There's three teams trying to come on, trying to order her signs. And literally in my messenger, um, I messaged Sam this morning. I think it was this morning. No, it was yesterday. Then I messaged somebody else. The, the email was in the recipient spam, not her spam. She had already sent an email over eight days ago and sent two messages in twice and submitted two tickets, right? So I'm always thinking like, what would the system have to look like for that not to be the system? And you know what she said to me? She said something that was so brilliant because the day before somebody called me and said, how do I get a logo if I can't get it in enterprise? I'm not on board yet, but I have 14 listings coming over with me and I want to have my signs so when I am on board, my signs are ready to go, but that's all behind the table, right? Does that make sense, yes or no? So I'm always trying to identify, like, what is the bottleneck, what is the constraint, what would, what would this, this system need to look like in order to improve it? And so communication is the first thing. 
You never want to assume people open in their email. You always want to use the force multiplier effect. You want to hit it by sea, by land, by air. For me, that would be, you know, text, email, Facebook messenger. At least two of what I would tell you is, when, when I'm talking to somebody about ESP and they're interested, you know they're interested in when they say, well, what is the next step? You know it, right? But every call should be, what is the next step? You should never get off a call without letting them crystal clear know the next step. Doesn't matter, that's just a principle. Right? They should always know the next step. So are you clear on what the next step is? You should check in with them, find out what is the next step. Every call, every email, every text message. Here's the next step. You want to be proactive. Establish a single point of direct communication. This is my personal preference. I know everybody's different. But listen, I had I have stuff coming in from this thing and this thing and email and text message. So if I'm going to establish it, if, if you're only as strong as your weakest link, then you got to be proactive and set the standard. And you got to say, here's how you communicate to me your problem. Right? Because you'll get it through, you're going to get it through workplace, you're going to get it through Facebook Messenger, you're going to get it through text, you're going to get it through email, you're going to get it through call. But if you standardize it, we, I, I prefer a ticket system. So it would just be support at your URL. If they send it into there for $20, $30, you can have a ticket system. When me and Jay first got into um, what we, what, when we got out of real estate, we took over sales for a website company back in 05. And there was a guy named Dave Moore, we called him a tyrant, but he would not let people go home until every ticket was handled. Period. That's the, that was, that was the standard. Right? So you want to, you, you want to look at what, you know, let people know exactly where they can go and when they have questions. For me, I tell people call my cell phone. And the only reason is because I am working on it. I want to know about every single problem. Right? Because I want to create a system. I want to prioritize it. I want to be able to think through it. I want to know, is it a problem? Is it a real problem? Is it a process? Where is it? Because it, all, that system is essentially what's going to be, make, be able to make you scale. Right? Would y'all agree? Yes or no? Yes. All right. So, plug them into your upline. Identify and introduce them to the people they can reach. Don't be scared to reach out to your upline. I give up. You can call me anytime. I get my number out to 10,000 people. My phone number, cell phone is 972-672-6271. My phone rang in the middle of the night. If I'm not around, I won't answer, but I'll call you back. If you need help, I'm here to help everybody. And I think that's the culture and the mindset. Woo! So here's my onboarding stages. I use stages like pipeline management. You want to have stage management. Clearly define what success looks like. What can be measured can be managed. So here's what happens. Onboarding stages starts with uh, attraction because onboarding starts with the promise you made. I use a little tool. This tool has been amazing. Um, I used to run an e-commerce site, so if you've never seen Shopify, Shopify is probably one of the best inventions in the world for the e-commerce business because they have a community, a platform. So many people develop softwares to make that tool so powerful. But this is like one of them. I would say this is for, it's like 20 bucks a month, but you can create so many stages. They already had a, they had a drag and drop stage line uh, pipeline uh, for real estate already built into the tool. And so, you know, when I first came on board, the first person I called was Sheila. And uh, Sheila Farajan, and she showed me what she was doing. She was in the back of the car, had someone driving. She was doing a Zoom, and she was seeing, she was showing me what she was doing, and she had a pipeline just like this, and we had it in HubSpot, so I recognized it. But it's just a framework for understanding where people are in the process, right? So, like, this is a pipeline I have. So I did a workshop today in Vegas. So at 1030, I did a workshop in Henderson. And I did a survey at the end. People attended, some didn't attend. I know the tin rate, I know the not show rate, I know the people who set up a call, I know some of them called me back here to come see us here. But everybody goes into a stage, and every stage has a defined measurement of success, right? If they if they schedule a call with me and they don't make the call, that's like the listing appointment not showing up to the listing, you're gonna reschedule that. There's a process between you and the ISA. Who owns that relationship? It's the same thing with people. What I say is this is best business in the world, you got to run your attraction like a business. Would y'all agree? So here's my stages. I have a hit list, I have canceled this call, I have scheduled call, working hot, in process, and activation. And everybody owns one of those stages. If somebody misses a call, I don't call them back, but they do get called back. Every time. I work too hard and travel too far away from my family to, to leave a deal like that. And plus, I owe it to them. It could change their life. Right? And stuff happens. You don't know what happened to them. That doesn't mean that they're not interested. So 
So my hit this stage, the goal is to invite them to see the offer. That might be a PGP, a webinar, a video. Anyone who's on my hit list, they have not been exposed to the offer. I am not getting on a phone call with nobody and pitching them EXP. That's not leverage. I tell everybody, when I get on the phone call, this is what I'm going to say. You ready? You want, you want my script? Here's my script. What are your questions? <laughs> you should have seen the offer. Right? So that's my hit list. Now, if they schedule a call, they see me also. So my goal is they, they, if they canceled or missed, I want them to reschedule. They haven't been exposed to the offer. If they scheduled and they completed it, then for me, I have them actually do what is called, you can write this down, it's a type tour. But, but I, have a, I have what is called, it's almost like a survey, right? It's a partnership opportunity. So when I get that deal, when they schedule that call, they sit it, they, sit, they, they fill out what is equivalent to a survey. And the very last question, it, there's several questions, but at one of the questions, because the, 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 the deal expands, it's a free tool, I believe, but it says, it says, um, are you interested in the agent attraction? I don't assume they are. I don't force it on them, right? But this girl named Kaylee, she was like, hey, she's going to be back a week later. She said, I told you I wasn't really into that, but um, I've been watching some of these videos. Is there a way we can talk about that again? You know, so I let them do it on their terms. But I know on each person when I'm going to schedule a call what, what what they find valuable based upon what they've seen. So they go to this survey, um, it identifies their goals, and we know how we're going to help them. I think the last call it just says it says how much how the biggest thing to me is is um you know not everybody wants to be a billionaire. You know, it's hard to dream when you're trying to survive. And for some people, you know, a couple thousand bucks is a real lot of money and can change their entire life. And so, you know, for me, if I know that going into that call and I know what they define success at, I'm not going to turn around and show them what I'm making. You know, I'm going to tell them a story about how I saw Tina Call post on Facebook with a bracelet that said Red Share Dance in 90 days. She was paying for a lake house. I'm going to tell them that story. That's believable. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So, working up, follow up based upon their goals and invite them to apply. In process, obviously in process, everybody know how to see the people that they have in process, yes or no? Who, who, let's be honest, let's look around the room, don't look up here. Who doesn't know how to see who's in process? Few of us, right? You go in, you click, you unclick active, you sort by status, and it'll show you who's in joining. You can actually do it for your whole downline, did you know that? You can do your whole downline. You can see every single level who's in joining. Pretty amazing, huh? But no, if you don't know about it, it's, it, it's not valuable. So in onboarding, you have to be able to explain to these people, if I'm going to teach you when you come on board on how to do agent attraction, and you're going to need to have a goal, and you're going to need to know how people are in process, where are you going to learn this? So I'm constantly thinking about the linear process that they're going to go through and where it fits into the next step. The goal is when they're active, my number one goal is for them to complete their onboarding. I know the weakest link is communication, and so I am constantly making sure that they get to what I call, not the fast start, but the quick start. The quick start is just a very small video that I can measure if they've watched it. I, have a, I can see if they watched it, I can put a next sequence if they didn't, I can text them, voice blast them. My only goal when you come on board is to make sure you watch that one video, because that one video is going to set the stage for the rest of the presentation, or the, the rest of the experience. So, onboarding stages. I use a tool called Teachable. It's amazing. Um, I literally, smartest kid in class, a guy named Pat Flynn, he owns Smart Passive Income, he uses Teachable. Why do I like it? Well, first of all, we enroll our agents into the Fast Start class, but I can see everybody who's went into each class. My unit economics doesn't go up or down based upon each individual. I can have massive amounts. Rob Flick can roll out a course, Scott can roll out a course, Gove can roll out a course, and it works like Audible. It's one central login, it's not 50 Kajabis. So if Trisha has a value proposition that she does something that I don't do, but she has, she wants to give it to him in Teachable, and then I give them mine in Teachable, and Jay gives him some in Teachable, then it's one login and it looks just like your Audible app. Does that make sense? And that took weeks of research, because I, I don't like to do it over. And that, that I just looked at the pros and cons, and I, I was the copycatter. I was like, so what does Lewis Howard use? What does Pat Flynn use? What's print? I mean, they have thousands of customers, right? 
We can track your progress, trigger automation. We can trigger automation based on lecture. Our course is ridiculous. So this is my fast start. Who would like to go through my fast start? Raise your hand. All right, I'm, I'm going to give you a way to go through it. I want to thank Woods Davis and Jay Kinder, Al Stasek, everybody who I did mention uh, for all the help that they did prior to getting it to where it is today. Um, but it's linear. It's linear. So every one of those, my, my first part of my process starts up setting up their tools and resources. I make sure you do not advance until everything is set up. Right? When you, if you were trained and disarm a bomb, you can't be partly trained. You're either trained or not trained. Who wants to be in the room with someone who's partly just trained and disarm a bomb? No one, right? You, you, don't, you don't get partly set up. You're either set up or you're not set up. That's the deal. If you ain't set up, why aren't you set up yet? And if I'm, if, I, if you're working with me, it's just my, it's just my nature. You're going to give me a date and we're going to have an agreement, no expectations. Can you get it done by next Friday? Great, let's do it. And I'm going to check in with you. Right? Because I know that agent productivity starts day one, agent retention starts day one. It's the law of thermodynamics that says nothing stays the same. You're either getting closer to your goals or further away. You either have a system or you don't hope it's not a strategy. Right? So, my fast start training, we set, we set them up, we put them in the tools and resources. Step two is all calendar, that's his best practice. So I'm, I, Jay does a leadership call. Jay does a Thursday live training. Go does trainings. I find out everybody's training, and I put it in one central location, which is, I have a whole um, personal philosophy on that, but I won't get into it. I don't want to digress. But the point is, is that they know where to go to know about all training events, and it's overly communicated. Because I will tell you, here's what I learned. Your downline, this is what I learned. My next door neighbor built a billion dollar, he's part owner of a billion dollar uh, um, direct sales company called World Ventures, Jefferson Santos. And he said to me, he said, you know, the power of your organization is in direct correlation with how many people can success successfully give the presentation. Right? Who have been trained. That's going to be a process. If they don't have a process to bring people on, and they're just trying to recruit somebody, it's just going to... It's just going to get out of control, right? So you, you let, let me. I wasn't going to do this, and I, I, I risk looking stupid, but I will end on time. I take pride in that. But I just this was a this is a huge point that I want to make. My name is Michael. What's your name? All right. My name is Michael. What's your name? Gregory. You see what she said? My name is Michael. Reese. What's your name? So he gave me his first name, I gave him my first name. She gave me her first and last name. I gave her my first and last name. If I would have told you that, I'd watch this go down in an audience. And people, they, they act like you act. They do what you do. They see what you, what, what they saw you do. I had a guy literally go down, he didn't tell us what he was doing. I was like, what is he doing? He was saying his first name, then his first and last name. His first name, then his first and last name. And the other person would say exactly what he said back to them. So if you don't think that the people are going to do exactly what they see you do, they are. They're going to be at events if you're at events. If you ain't at events, they ain't going to go to events. And I know that the number one thing you need to do is go to the next event because motivation is easily lost and hard to find. And, you know, the, the struggle is real. That don't mean that it's not possible. It's just going to take a little effort. Effort is the energy it takes to overcome resistance. Right? Belief. You have belief, right? Belief is diminishing. Every day until you have an experience. So every day, belief is diminishing. You're putting out effort, but it's effortless if you've already done it. You just know if you've done it somewhere else, you're like, hey, this is the deal. You're going to have losses. You're going to have these experiences. Things are going to mess up. I'm going to show up to a workshop. They're going to have no screen, no speaker, no nothing. It's going to happen. Oh, it's one of those. I mean, I showed up and they said, no, you're not in a building. You're on a boat. That's a true story. I was on a boat and it was like leaning to the side. We made it happen. So, set up your tools and resources. That's the goal. The goal is to give them small victories with a clear action plan. Make the value visible. Set up all the tools. Get them to the value. Um, each class that I have has short videos. I learned that from HubSpot. HubSpot has a training on it that I think is worth a half a million dollars. I think it's the best training. I literally think they can sell it for $500,000. If you have it, it's free. 
It's all principle driven. But if you go through it, what I realized is I'd be sitting on the train and I'd look at the next video and it would say 28 minutes. I'd be like, man, I ain't got time for that one. You know, but if it said five, I'd go to the next one. Four, I'd go to the next one. Three, I would go to the next one. So my original fast start was almost two hours until a guy tried to get me in jail on a three hour call. And he said, Jay said to me, we were at his house. He's like, who the hell got time for a three hour call? I was like, well, that's what we were doing. You know? So it's just having that awareness. So you want to have action steps. Every one of my videos has action steps to the next thing. So in this one, it's set up your EXP enterprise. <clears throat> EXP enterprise is your business dashboard. It provides you with one place to access all of your EXP resources. You should have received an email with the subject line, Welcome to EXP Realty, your passport account. You will need to activate your passport in order to log in. EXP Passport is a single sign-on system that allows you to access many of the EXP Realty tools in one place with only one password. In this email, simply click the Activate Your Passport to get started. Do not put this off. This should be done immediately. The link in the email will expire in 30 days. The activation process will require two-factor authentication to add an extra layer of security. Once you've successfully logged in to see your new business dashboard, you will now have access to all of your EXP resources from one place. To access your EXP tools, look at the technology section of the dashboard. This is where you can access SkySlope for transaction management, which we will get into in much more detail later. KD Core, which is a powerful CRM and lead generation tool. You can also turn on marketing with making it rain man. This allows you to generate leads on demand. This is a place where you can download the world for the first time, or download it if you purchase a new computer in the future. It's also where you can generate a guest pass to the world for a potential new recruit. Under resources and education, you can access the EXP provided upcoming live training calendar. You can become an EXP mentor for other agents or access tech support. Easily submit a ticket and get help from a tech support team who's there to support you in your business. You also have a marketing and branding section. Find everything from sign options, logos, great customized marketing material, business cards, all in one place. If you have a question, there is a good chance it's already been answered. Get answers quickly by going to the EXP Explorer. Here's a quick action item. Bookmark the explore.exprealty.com so you can navigate the process quickly and smoothly. This should be the first place you go when you have questions. It will either answer the questions or point you in the right direction to find the answer. <laughs> Access your business dashboard. Simply click on the tab that reads Dashboard. Track your volume, your units, growth rate, track your business monthly or annually. See all your historical transaction data in one place. Need to know where you are in your cap? Your dashboard tracks your capping summary, revenue share summary, and all the fees you paid. Everything again all in one place. You can track all your equity programs and awards. See the number of shares and the price you've earned. Recruit an agent, sell your first deal, or maybe you've invested a percentage of your commission divided the stock at a 20% discount. This is a place that keeps track of all the stock you've earned. Track your revenue share details. Simply click on the revenue share tab under finance. Track the agents you sponsor, all your frontline qualifying agents, Track the total size of your revenue share group and the organization. See how many people joined you in the last 30 days. See all unpaid revenue share or what you should expect on your next check. This is easily accessed right here on the side navigation bar. Under finance by clicking on the revenue share tab. Also transactions detail. Click on the transaction section. Track and get an overview of all your personal performance. Know what percentage of your CAP you pay. Know what percentage of your E&O risk management fee. You can look at all of your pending closings, all your withdrawals, all your cancels, all your open transactions by a specific date range by simply clicking on the transactions tab. And don't forget to download the app. Search OKTA Mobile. Download the app. Once you've downloaded the app, enter your organization as EXP Realty. Put in your username, 
and your password for enterprise. That will give you mobile access to all the benefits of enterprise in one place. Access Workplace, EXP World. Access EXP Explorer. Access the EXP Guest Management. Again, all in one place from your mobile device by downloading the OKTA mobile app to your smart device. Here's your action steps. Activate your passport account if you haven't already. Log into enterprise.com and click on some of the links to access your tools and resources. And download the app, the OKTA mobile app, to your phone and set up enterprise on your phone. So that's an example of the videos. Facebook Lives 
with their first transaction, their first 30 days, their first 90 days, their first year, when they've achieved icon status, when they earn their first stock, and when they've earned their first revenue share check. Your FLQAs are frontline qualifying agents. Everybody qualifies in the first six months. After six months, to remain qualified, they must at least have produced 5,000 in commissions or do at least four transactions. Your first five FLQAs unlocks your second level of revenue share. 10 unlocks your third, 15 unlocks your fourth, 20 unlocks your fifth, 25 unlocks your sixth level, and 40 unlocks your seventh level. Always be looking for your generals. These are growers who are on pace or have demonstrated they are going to get to at least 100 agents in the revenue share group. Generals go to the life events. If they are willing to get on a plane and invest in themselves, they are worth investing your time in. Your goal should be to create 10 generals. You want to be super high touch with these individuals. You want to lead them to doing their own live events, weekly lunch and learns, and hosting their own PGPs. You want to get them plugged in at the highest level. Get them plugged into the mastermind events and all company events. This is where you're going to track your unqualified FLAs. These are agents that haven't met the minimum production requirements in the last six months. They might be focused on agent attraction or they don't have any production. Call them and help make sure they have what they need to be successful. Make sure they have their KV course set up. Make sure they're leveraging making it rain. Make sure they have all the training and they're attending the training. Get them to the event. Help coach them up. Make sure you're setting your yearly goals. Set your passive income goals, both income and agents. For example, if you want to make 375,000 passive annual revenue, that's going to be roughly 469 agents, based upon the assumptions we use. We use $800 per agent for an estimated annual income per agent. So for example, if the income goal is 375,000 divided by 800, that means you have to have 469 agents in your total revenue share group. And remember, you have to have the frontline qualifying agents to earn off all 469 agents. After each year, record the action and review your goals. Track your action numbers and potential revenue. Keep track of all the total agents and the potential revenue at each level of your revenue share. See how much you could have made or you might be leaving on the table by unlocking more levels. Finally, track your total estimated revenue. $800 per agent is a good number to estimate your total annual revenue. Use this number to track your progress towards your freedom number. Don't skip calculating your freedom number. This is the annual passive income number. You would need to replace your active income earned from selling homes. Again, use $800 per agent per year to determine the total number of agents needed in your red share group to hit your goal. Once you've hit your freedom numbers, you can focus full time on agent attraction and start growing exponentially. Here's your action steps. Download and print your wealth chart. Determine your freedom numbers, write it down on your wealth chart. Make your hit list. Alright, so if you want to go through the onboarding system, you can text onboard to 3, uh, 31996. Um, that's if you want to go through, anybody can go through anything I can do to help you. Anybody who wants to collaborate on onboarding, um, I'd, love to, I'd love to connect with you. You can get with me on Workplace. Um, but I can add you to our, th those, those videos are, I don't know exactly how many of them. There's probably eight or nine for each section. Um, the agent attraction section, people always want to skip through, but I think all of them are equally as valuable. I learned a lot just putting it all together. And so hopefully you will tune it to make you more confident and be able to answer better questions. So with that being said, my time's almost out. Just text on board to 31996.